Good afternoon, this is Donna Carroll, and I'm coming to you live on YouTube. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a great Sunday. And I am very grateful to be back here with you today. And today I have a special treat for you because today we have my client, Andrea Weiland, and she is going to come on live with me today and we are going to channel her father. Well, I'm going to channel her father who passed last September and she's going to ask questions. And I decided that this would be a fun exercise to give you guys an idea of how I channel in my readings and how you could channel your beloveds who have passed on and are on the other side. Um, so, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Andrea. Are you there? We'll wait because... Here I am. There you are. Hi, how are you today? Hi, I'm good. <laughs> That's great. So, um, I'm so excited that I'm going to channel your father. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your father and your relationship? Whatever feels comfortable to you. Um, yeah, so he, he was 80. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, I don't see me on the YouTube part. I see you. Okay. Oh, there, there it goes. It takes a while. So dad was um, 87 when he died, and he lived in Sedona. He was very spiritual. He tried to be spiritual anyway. He had a guru, and he went to India and all that stuff. So it was kind of cool. We were a little bit on the same page with that because I'm spiritual and I'm open to what you do in fact I've worked with Donna for um I don't know five or six or seven years I've I've had you channel for me yeah. um and so I just wanted we've we've actually talked to dad a few times using your channel and so I'm just touching base with him again today and ask a few questions about what he's doing and what he sees from the other side and any guidance that he might have for me. Mm -hmm. So, and How does it feel for you when I bring over your father? Is it comforting to you? Does it, how, what is your reaction to the child? Oh, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it's very comforting. And in fact, um, I'll just tell the little story of right after he died the week, um, the week that he died, you had come to, to Sedona to help me out for a few days. And we had a day where everything, everything I tried to do got blocked, like all the paperwork and stuff after his passing, everything. And then I said, you know, let's just go to, to uh, Starbucks. I need a Frappuccino because <laughs> I'm so stressed out. And the Frappuccino machine was broken. And that was the end. I said, Donna, is my father interfering in this? And she like right in the grocery store stopped and checked in and said, yes. And so you did a channeling that night and he basically was, I don't want you to sell the house. I'm, you know, this is still my house. And Donna had to say to him, no, you know, you're dead. <laughs> we have to cut the cords and you, <laughs> you're going to let this go. So it's, it's actually, it's been incredibly comforting. And one of the cool things is that since he's on the other side and he's done his life review, he sees things in a much clearer way and he can apologize for the times when, you know, he could have been a better, better father and stuff. And that's incredibly comforting for me. You know, I talked to him on my own a little bit too, but I love checking in with the channel and getting that information. Right. And Andrea has decided to take my channeling class in yes, June. I am. Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited. It starts June 3rd. So ultimately, the goal would be that you could channel the fa your father for yourself. Or yeah. usually, actually, when you channel someone that's passed on the other side, it's helpful to have a sounding board. So if you wanted to channel your father, you would recruit a friend to ask the questions to you, and then you would bring him through, and he would th speak through you. But um, ultimately, after the channeling class, you will be able to channel your guides and loved ones that have passed to the other side. So it's going to open a whole new world for you. And I know you're going to be very good at it. I just, I just know you are. 
Yeah, I'm very intuitive and open to this stuff, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I thought we would bring your dad in and your dad's name is Dr. Paul Weiland and he was a dental surgeon, so a very accomplished man. Um, anything that you want to add before we start? No, let's do it. Okay, so you've got your questions ready? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take a drink of water because <clears throat> I have to clear my throat before I channel sometimes. Excuse me. Okay, so at this time, I would like to call in my highest and best healing and channeling guides. You can see they come in because I physically move. I also would like to call in Andrea's highest and best healing and channeling guides and Dr. Paul Weiland's highest and best healing and channeling guides. I would like to bring in my guides, the Archangels, Archangel Raphael, Archangel Ariel, Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel. I asked for 10,000 warrior protection angels around Paul, Andrea, and myself. I also ask for these angels around anyone that's watching this live stream or anyone that will watch this video in the future. Please block all negative entities, energies, and thought forms from entering this space. Keep the space clear and high. And lastly, we ask for a guide to oversee this channeling. I'm gonna call in the Lemurian Mother Goddess, and she will be the guide that oversees the class coming up in June. I invoke her and I ask her to make my words clear, accurate, loving, and truthful. And lastly, we bring in Paul Weiland. Please come in. Okay, your dad's here. Um, and now I'm going to let him speak through me so you can ask a question or um, start whenever you're ready. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, dad. Hi, Andrea. How's, how are you doing overall? I'm great. I'm doing quite well, actually. I've adjusted to being over here. It is an adjustment. It takes some time to get used to being on the other side because um, the environment is different. As you know, your thought takes you to your reality. So you go from one place to another very, very quickly and things manifest over here in no time at all. So it's, it's nice because you can get from point A to point B quickly. You can do things quickly. And I like the speed over here, but it did take some time to get used to it. Um, are you... I know you were working on healing before. Have you healed things from the from your life? Are you um, how much are you able to look over my brother and me and guide us and see what we're up to? I've healed some things, but my healing work has just begun, and it seems like. Yes, I am working on healing myself and I have guides that help me with this on the other side. And so they give you something to work on. It could be um, your anger that you had when you were alive. It could be your greed. It could be um, your sadness. It could be your inability to deal with other people's shortcomings. <clears throat> And so they give you a topic to work on and it's piecemeal. So I'll get a topic to work on and then I'll review it. It's like I get a deeper life review. Um, for instance, I've been working on my relationship with your mother, which was tumultuous, as you know. And so the things that have come up, I have to look at them and I do I see snippets of my life and and my relationship with your mom and the arguing and the disenfranchisement that I felt and I felt somewhat trapped when we were in our marriage but um what happens is that my guides are there and I do have um and so I'm asking Paul who are your guides my guides are 
angels. I have angelic guides that are helping me. And I also have guides that work with me. I have a therapist. <laughs> he was a doctor on in earth and now he's on the other side and he's actually helping me dissect what's going on. And he was a psychotherapist from New York City. Anyhow, and I'm getting his name, but I don't wanna say that publicly. Um, so basically, uh, when I go through the life review, the snippets of the altercations that I have with your mom, I see them and I look at them and I look at them from as an objective, as objectively as I can. And then after I review them as many times as I need to, to understand what happened, what transpired, then I go and talk it out with the doctor. But the interesting thing about it is that I actually um, get to see the uh, conversation or the event from your mother's perspective and from everyone's perspective that was there partaking in the energy. So if you were there, I see it from your perspective. So I see it from my perspective, your perspective, your mom's and your brother's perspective if all were involved. So it's very, very intense. It's very comprehensive. Mm -hmm. And then I talk to Dr. X and we work out what happened, how I could have handled the situation better, um, how you were feeling, how your brother was feeling, how it affected you. And it's just opened my eyes. I can't tell you um, how helpful that has, this has been. And I wish that I would have had this ability or opportunity to do this in real time when I was alive on earth, but now I have all the time and I have all the focus and support that I need to really change my behavior so that when I incarnate again, I can hopefully bring these lessons from the other side to my reality. Now your question was, am I looking after your brother and you? And he said, of course I am. I told you that I would and I am and I am supporting you as best as I can. I'm sending you light. I'm sending you help. And you know that I have the ability to manifest pretty easily to the earth plane. I still carry that ability. So if you need anything, help or a sign or a connection, I would love to do that for you. Yeah. Um, I just want to say it's funny because he had therapists during his lifetime and that never helped. So I'm really glad that it's working now. Um, dad, good job. Um, <laughs> So, so a couple questions about housing. Hey, he's saying you're wrong, Andrea. It did help. It, it did. did. Help. Yes, it did. He's like, it helped. It helped me. I, sorry to interject, but I just need to say that because um, things would have been a lot worse if I didn't have my therapist. Hmm. Um, so about housing and location. So I just want to, two questions, um, especially... So my father used to say like Sedona is a really safe place to be and he wanted me to move into his house when he left, when he passed over. And so we ended up selling his house. So I kind of feel bad about that. So I just want to check in with him. Um, does he still, you know, think that that would have been good for me to, to stay in his house and be in Sedona? Um, is one question. The other question is I'm thinking about looking at St. Petersburg and Florida. So just from the perspective that he's in, I just thought I'd see what he, if he has thoughts about that. Yes, I do have thoughts about it, but um, you're to live your own life. And one of the things that I'm learning is that I need to be less controlling and more accepting of my children's decisions. So on the other side, obviously I'm not as attached. We're in two different spheres of consciousness. But um, regarding your decision to sell my house, I was disappointed at the time. As you know, I tried to block the sale. And I would have liked for you to have lived in Sedona because I think it's a very um, enlightening place. It has a lot of spiritual energy. It's beautiful. There's many interesting people there. However, 
I understand your decision to sell the house. And I think that for you, it's best to understand that you sold the house and not have regrets about it, that you are actually living in Cape Cod now and you are living there because energetically um, you are there to support your mother during her infirmity, her, her days, her, the, the last passage of her life. So there's a reason for you to be where you are. Um, it's not in vain. Don't think that it's in vain. There's always a reason for everything. Do I wish that you would have stayed in Sedona? I think it would have been nice, but I think that wherever you go, you have to make your place. You have to plant the seeds that will bring you a joyful and happy life. So I support you in being where you're at. Do you, I think it would be good for you to look at buying? Are you looking at buying a place in St. Petersburg? Yeah, the, the possibility of it. And um, my brother Brock is buying a condo there. He really likes it. So I thought that would be interesting to have a place in the same place that my brother's in too. Okay, so. This is Donna Carroll. I'm bringing in Dr. Paul Weiland. Please come in. No, I don't think St. Petersburg is going to be the place for you. Energetically, I do not feel like this is the best place for you. And I feel like still your life is going to shift dramatically this year as I can see that you are going to meet your soulmate and you are going to wind up living with your soulmate in your soulmate's residence. This is what I see. And he says, and I don't just see this, I'm working on this, Andrea, because we hear over on the other side that you're disappointed or that you want this to occur. And actually I am working on it for you. Thanks, dad. You're welcome. But yeah, I mean, you and your brother don't even really uh, are not simpatico, so I'm not understanding why you would want to be in your brother's on your brother's turf. Your brother has a lot of work to do spiritually, and I'm trying to help him with that. I'm sorry to the audience if I'm being really open about you know family stuff, but you know obviously all family relationships have the good and the bad and the indifferent, and so I'm trying to be as authentic as possible yeah and that's who he is anyways um but no i don't think saying you're gonna wind up in saint petersburg he's winking <laughs> <laughs> do you um am, am i still do you still see me getting married by the end of the year i do i see you getting hitched because this has been something that is predestined. You are to be with your soulmate, workmate, twin flame, someone who you are going to do your soul mission with. And the work that you have done up to now has prepared you for this greater work, which is spiritual in nature. And it's a heavy task, I'm not gonna lie to you. I have actually sat down and talked with your guides and your guides have told me what you have written on the agenda for the last part of your earthly experience and your work. And so I think it's grand. I think it's beautiful. It has to do with uh, healing emotional connections and relationships between the masculine and feminine aspects or the divine feminine and divine masculine souls. And so you know, the work that you've done up to now has prepared you for this. It's exciting. And you're going to be a lot happier. You're going to be a lot happier when all these connections come into place. When you meet your soulmate, when you meet your the rest of your soul tribe, and when you're actually living with these people, physically, geographically. And don't forget that you are on the ascension journey and all of these pieces of the puzzle will come together the further that you go on the ascension journey. So, you know, everything as the channel says and everybody else says, everything happens in divine timing. But you have a lot of support over here. Lots and lots of support. 
What's the, um, does he have thoughts about the timing? Like, I feel like I'm going crazy right now in this world with what's going on with the virus. Um, you know, not catching the virus, just all the other crap and the lockdowns and stuff. It's really, um, the isolation is really starting to get to me. Is there, does he see a bridge between here and somewhere else that is going to make me more hopeful about what you just said? Because I don't, I feel like even more stuck than ever in this from the outside world. Yes, there will be a bridge or an opening. And he says, and I'm just going to bring him in. Yes, you're going to have an opening and a bridge and a connection. And he said the watershed moment or the uh, time when you feel most connected will be the time when you meet your significant other. And when you can kind of retreat from this life that you're living right now and start a new life, your life will be very, very different a year from now. And I know that you've been told you're gonna meet this one and that one, but seriously, Andrea, it is written in the stars. You do have a soulmate that you're here to work with. It's not just a physical or romantic connection. It's a work connection. You're here to do your divine soul mission together. And this person is aware of you and waiting for you. So this will be the connection that you need to feel more whole and to feel more supported and to feel less um, affected by what's going on in the outside world. The outside world from my perspective, yeah, it's just, it's always been crazy, but this is like the craziness has been heightened. Um, you know, as far as the coronavirus goes, there's an, an, an agenda in place, an implementation in place, if you will. Um, there was a design to shut down small businesses, a design to shut down the interaction between people and create the social distancing, you know, a lot of this stuff is manipulated and controlled. Your job is to understand what's going on, but then to detach from it. Don't let it get you down. It's not worth it. This too shall pass. You know, people aren't going to even remember this in a couple of years. It won't be, it'll be a blip on the screen. Um, they'll remember it, but it'll be like 911, something that passes. Yes. So don't, don't fret. This is, this is a hard time because in a sense, you're in no man's land. You're stepping out of the third dimension, going into the fifth, and you're in this in-between space and it's uncomfortable, but it's uncomfortable for many people. So please understand that. And also talk to your guides. I'm excited that you're going to be able to channel me and other guides because that's going to help you feel more connected. Okay, so this is Donna Carroll talking. So one more question, and then we'll um, wrap up this channeling. Andrea? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so th the last question is, um, anything that I need to be doing to get where he's talking about that I'm not doing or any like next steps that I should know about from his point of view? From my point of view, um, you need to be meditating more. You need to be connecting more consistently with your guides um, and with spirit in general. Meditation is important. And you really should be meditating every day if you can, because not only will it help you connect, the meditation will help you detach from the craziness going on in this world. So meditation, and then I ask, is there anything else? Um, he's saying that you need to have much less self-judgment. You're not to judge yourself for not doing this or doing that. Um, you have certain ideas about how your business should be going or how your life should be going or where you should be living or what you should be doing. He's like, you need to throw that out of the window. Just don't judge yourself. Just sit in this time, in this no man's land between the third and the fifth dimension and make the best use of the time by meditating and connecting to spirit because your life is going to shift and change and you're going to get very busy in the future. So use this time as a gift. 
because you have the time to explore and to um, release and to um, let yourself be guided. Let yourself be guided. If you don't know what to do, just call in your highest self and let that person, that multidimensional oversoul, uh, bring you what you need in your life. But honestly, I think you're doing just fine. Um, a lot of people, many people on the earth are doing a lot worse off, a lot worse than you. Some people are having extreme panic attacks. Some people are going through extreme financial duress. I see what other people are going through and it's, um, it's difficult for many to bear. So just try to look at the positive and the grace and the good aspect of this uh, viral situation because it's bringing you to a higher state of consciousness. It's moving you from point A to point B, which is the third to the fifth dimension. Okay. So thank I have, you. Thanks, oh, Dad. Oh, you're welcome, honey. And then I asked Dr. Paul Weiland, do you have anything else that you want to say to the audience? I just want to say that to the audience that, you know, don't let, don't let it take you to pass from this dimension to learn the lessons that I'm learning now on the other side. I was obsessed with success my business, achievement, I enjoyed accumulating money. But let me tell you that that stuff doesn't mean that much to me now. Now I'm working on compassion, tolerance, love, understanding. And I would just say, you know, try to work on the things that are really important, the things that are really important to your soul. That's not to say that I did not um, pursue spiritual subjects and topics. I certainly did. And I uh, meditated a lot and I had a guru and I had a circle and it was good. But I'm just saying that right now I'm dealing with the personal aspects of my life, my interpersonal relationships. So if your relationships are not what they could be, if they have not met uh, your potential um, you know, the ultimate is bringing in love, unconditional love. So take the opportunity in your lives to work on that, work on your interpersonal relationships, work on bringing in more love, work on bringing in healing while you're alive. I will have to do this again on the earth plane. I'm going to incarnate again, not soon, but take the time to work on your relationships and look at yourselves. And that's what I would have to say, or that's what I want to say. And I want—I wish you all well. I wish you all healing. Don't let the coronavirus get you down. You'll move through it and happy ascension. Namaste. Okay. And now the channel comes back. Sorry, I'm a little... Oh, thanks. This is Donna. Thank Pell. you. Thank you, Donna. That was awesome. Oh, thanks, Andrea. I appreciate that. And I want to thank Paul. Thanks so much. We always love it when you come in and you always have um, many nice things to say and to share. And we appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Dad. All right. I'm going to um, shut my video down then, right? Sure. Yeah. Or do so you want me to stay here while you talk? Yes, and I wanted to do a chat or ask people if they had any questions to type in the chat, but I'm not seeing the chat box. Are you seeing it? Are you seeing a chat box? Um, no, I don't see it. Oh, wait, here's chat. Hold on. So I'm is pressing it on YouTube chat. or on Zoom. Yeah, I see it. I got it. Thanks. Okay. I don't even know if anyone's listening right now, so we'll see. If anyone has a question, I'm typing this. I don't see anyone but you and me. Oh, okay. It's just you and me. Okay. So anyhow, so if anyone watches this video later uh, during the week, I just want to talk a little bit about the class that I am offering starting June 3rd. 
And this is my class called Learn to Channel the Lemurian Way. And Andrea is going to be taking the class, which is really exciting. And some other people. Um, I do have a couple of spots left if anyone's interested. I don't know when I'll be teaching this class again, not anytime in the near future, because my next project is uh, editing and publishing Thor's book, which is going to take some time. So I just wanted to say there are many reasons why you should learn to channel. And the first reason is that it will expand your consciousness like nothing else. It will raise your vibration like nothing else. Channeling gets you naturally, naturally high, very, very high. And um, you'll be able to bring in the guides closest to you, whether they're angels, Pleiadians, your aunt that's passed over. And typically you can channel more than one entity. And as you channel, you'll be able to channel more and more entities. But basically, um, learning to channel, and I have a proprietary process to do this. It's called the EAT system, educate, activate, and translate. But essentially, when you learn to channel, you bring in expanded states of a of consciousness and you bring in your guides and you'll have the ability to bring in their guidance. And their guidance is from a totally different perspective, a much expanded state of consciousness. So you'll get really good advice, good information, and you will get healing energy from your guides. Um, so if you're a metaphysical practitioner, if you're a healer, if you're a psychic, if you're a meditator, channeling will help you do nothing but help you in those respective fields. Anyone can learn how to channel. We're multidimensional beings. We have all have the ability to channel. And when you learn to become a channel, you start breaking down the veils between your multidimensional self. So it helps you to become more whole, less fragmented, and you get in touch with the highest aspects of yourself. Um, so if you're a therapist, if you're a musician, if you're a coach, if you're an artist or a singer, if you're a healer, when you channel, you'll be able to bring in higher octaves of those energies. So an artist who channels is going to create much more beautiful work because her guides are gonna be working with her, her spirit guides, and they're going to bring in new perspectives, teachings even on how to paint or whatever. So I just wanna say, I hope you consider taking this channeling class. It's great because it's on Zoom and it's live. It's not pre-packaged, it's not pre-recorded. It's a live class with an experienced teacher. Moi, and I would love it if you were there. So I want to say thank you for listening today. We really appreciate your attention and I wish you all the best. So I am going to say goodbye. Namaste.